Okay guys, Richard Holzer coming to you live from the tree fort. The question is, how does this happen? In this video, we'll take a look back at an epic failure. Now, you should be familiar with the Big Bang stuff. You know, where we ran the turbo, turned it all the way up. I recently did a video on that. This was a Big Bang nitrous. We wanted to find out how much nitrous a stock 5.3 would actually take. Well, we found out something. I don't think we found out that, but we definitely found out something. The idea behind the Big Bang nitrous thing was to find out how much power with nitrous the stock bottom end of an LS motor could take. Now, this was an outgrowth of the original Big Bang that we did with the turbos, where we took a stock bottom end, added a ring gap, put heads, cam, and intake on it, then two turbos, and turned them all the way up until something broke. Now, I did that test with a Gen 348, a Gen 353, a Gen 360, and then finally with a Gen 460. And after doing all that testing, the nitrous guy screamed, hey, what about us? We need some love. How about doing the same test, but with nitrous? And I thought, you know what? That's a really good idea. Now, I don't think we'll get the same power that we did with the turbos, but I do think we might be able to reach like a thousand horsepower, which would be a big number. As it turned out, it was a lot bigger than I thought. Y'all know what happened, but let's find out why. That's right, we're back in the treehouse. Actually, in the treehouse for the first time. You might think building a thousand horsepower junkyard 5.3 is easy. I mean, we just go down to the wrecking yard, pick up a junkyard motor, add a bunch of nitrous, and boom, it all happens magically. The reality is it takes a game plan, and that's exactly what I had with this test, just like with the Big Bang Turbo stuff. Now, to build a thousand horsepower nitrous motor, even one from the junkyard, it's better to start out with a healthy, naturally aspirated motor. That's right, and that's exactly what I did. I decided, hey, Let's try to build a powerful 5.3. Now we were somewhat limited by the stock bottom end in terms of compression and available cam timing, but build a powerful NA motor. My goal was 500 horsepower. That way, if I had 500 horsepower in the NA motor, all I had to do was add 500 horsepower for the nitrous. And we were gonna do that in two stages. So hit the first one, let it settle, then hit the second one. Starting with 500, two hits, boom, we're all done. We look like a hero. Famous last words. Okay, so we had a plan, but here's how we made it happen. I went to the junkyard, picked up a 5.3 LM7, you know, the ones with the dish pistons, brought it back and disassembled it. Now on this one, all I did was increase the ring gap. We cleaned it up a little bit, but I didn't take it to the machine shop. There was no surfacing, no honing, no nothing. Actually, I didn't care about this one. And I didn't think that head gasket sealing was gonna be a problem with this particular motor, because I thought for sure, it's gonna break something inside the motor. And as it turned out, I was right, more than a little bit. But to increase the power output, we reassembled the short block with the extra ring gap. And then I installed a new camshaft from Brian Tooley Racing, a nitrous cam. Well, truth be told, it's not designated a nitrous cam. It's actually des designated a stage four LS3 cam. But nonetheless, it worked very well, even though it's for an LS3, on our nitrous cathedral port motor. So working with that cam was a set of trick flow 220 as cast heads. Now, why did I use the as cast ones? Well, those 220 heads are every bit as good as maybe a 215 or a 225 CNC part head, but they're a lot less money. We also like the fact that they have a thick deck, much thicker than the factory head, so they're definitely gonna seal. They had more than enough flow to support the power level we had on our 5.3. So, Brian Tooley Racing, stage four LS3 cam, trick flow 220 heads, Naturally, we had ARP head studs and Felpro MLS gaskets. Then we topped that with a Holly high ram intake. Now, we wanted this thing to make peak power up fairly high because we were gonna hit the nitrous later on. Get everything working, no big torque spike. Get the power without hopefully blowing everything up. Famous last words. So we installed the Holly high ram. Now, instead of running it carbureted, I actually ran it fuel injected, but I ran it with the dual quad top. We ran two 4150 throttle bodies, and it worked really well. So let's check that out. Let's see it run naturally aspirated before we add the nitrous, and check out those results. Is the, these are the power curves from our 5.3 liter modified LM7 with the Brian Tooley Stage 4 LS3 cam, Trick Flow 220 heads, and the Holly High Ram intake. As you can see, we ran this thing out to 7,000 RPM. It made peak power 400 or, hey, come on, 
502 horsepower out here at 6700 RPM and made peak torque of 408 foot-pounds. As you can see, it had a nice flat torque curve that allowed it to carry the power out higher in the RPM range. This was equipped with the Holley High Ram, and remember it had two 4150 throttle bodies, not that a single 4150 throttle body could have supported this power level because each one of those flow, you know, maybe a thousand CFM. So that's more than enough. We just had two on it because we had that uh, dual quad lid on the High Ram, you know, which is different than the single front open throttle body that a lot of guys run, especially on the turbo stuff. So this is a naturally aspirated power output. We did make 500 horsepower, which is awesome. It's a good start. So now let's check out what happened when we add some nitrous. As you can see from the results, we reached our power goal of exceeding 500 horsepower from our naturally aspirated 5.3 liter. So now it was time for some nitrous. To supply nitrous to our motor, we chose an NOS crosshair plate system. Each NOS plate had two sets of spray bars, two nitrous and two fuel. So technically, each plate could be run as a dual kit, but we had two of those. So technically we had four, but we only ran them in two stages. On the first stage, we installed a 45 nitrous jet. And on the second stage, we installed a 65 nitrous jet. Now the idea was to run the first stage by itself, the second stage by itself, then combine the two in stages. So let's find out what happened and watch the Big Bang. Okay, we took a look at the power output of our naturally aspirated 5.3 liter, made over 500 horsepower, which is awesome. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we added the nitrous. We were using that NOS crosshair system equipped with 45 horsepower jets to begin with. This would be our, what we call our stage one. Check out that, nice, nice power curve. The tune was right on. Picked up the power from 500 horsepower to, well, we won't even, we'll ignore those spikes over there because we don't really care about that. But 665, so that was a fairly conservative tune. That was not a conservative tune, but a conservative jetting size. So we had a nice gain there. Good power gain, nice and even, nice and smooth. The air fuel ratio was spot on. Everything worked out great. So this is was our uh, stage one kit, basically, our first stage. So now let's take a look at what happened when we added our second stage. Okay, we've run the NA motor at 500 horsepower and we ran our first stage of nitrous. So then we did the check on our second stage of nitrous, running the second stage all by itself. So that's our NA power output, a little over 500 from our 5.3. And here's what happened when we ran the second stage just by itself. Look at that, nice jump. That was with a 65 jet on the nitrous. We took away about, I think, eight degrees of timing. Picked the power up over 800, 825, 830 horsepower there. So that was nice. Nice, easy jump, nice smooth curve. If you take a look down here, you see this big drop down in the 5,000 to 5,500 range. What, we're, what we were trying to do there with the tune is when we engage the nitrous, we usually get a momentary lean spike in the nitrous, and this would come back to bite me later on and me being stupid. We were trying to preemptively strike that lean spike with uh, a bunch of extra fuel. And when we did that, we definitely changed the power output there. But after we engaged the nitrous, everything was fine. So we were trying to do a little uh, preventative maintenance there and add some fuel uh, right before we would activate the nitrous. But on the second stage, just like the first stage, really good power, you know, 820, 830. So if we compare that to the first stage, which we activated a lot earlier in the, in the system. So you can see, you know, we picked up uh, 165 horsepower there. We picked up 330 there. That would put us right near the thousand horsepower mark. And if we had to, we obviously could do a little bit of tuning or we could add even more nitrous jet to the primary stage and things would work out. But we thought this combination would really get us there. So now let's take a look at what happened when we tried to run 
both. Hey guys, here we go. NA motor, stage one, we're good. Stage two, we're good. Then we decided, okay, we're gonna hit one, and then a little ways into the run, we'll hit the second one. And that way both kits will be activated. So here's what happened when we did that. Boom, all kinds of ugliness. And the reason that this happened is we had engaged the first one, and then when I grabbed the, hit the button for the second kit, it got really lean. And now I don't know why, again, it was right for the first one, right for the second one when they run individually, and it was really lean. But I decided this, there must be something going on. It was right for the first one and right for the second one. It's gotta be right for this. This is a momentary lean spike. I'm going to stay in it, which is not really a good idea. <laughs> When you see a 14 to one and you're trying to combine stages of nitrous, bad things happen. I'm sure it blew a piston up and, and the result is what you see right here. Yeah, that's all kinds of ugly. Well, that's what happens when you don't listen to your air fuel ratio meter and when the tune is off on a really high horsepower nitrous, it ends up blowing up. But, and that's all on me, it has nothing to do with anybody else. I should have got out of it. We should have figured out what was going on and done more testing because just like with the Big Bang Turbo stuff, you have to have the right tune on the thing. Otherwise, you know, when you're dealing with these stock bottom ends with cast rods and, or cast pistons and powder metal rods, they're not very forgiving. If you have a lean spike like this, it's definitely gonna blow something up. So all my fault, I wanna redo it. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did we learn? Well, I'll tell you what I learned. Even though the air fuel ratio is good on the first stage, and the air fuel ratio was good on the second stage, the air fuel ratio wasn't good when we tried to combine them. So when the air fuel meter shows you 14 to one, you should get off the throttle. Of course, I'm talking to myself. 14 to one, it was only there momentarily. I was gonna drive through it. I thought it would be fine. It was only there for a short period of time. Yeah, it was only there just long enough to blow the motor up. And the backfire that you saw, it hurt something, it hurt a piston or something, and that was the backfire, blew the whole top of the motor off, which, by the way, was awesome. So it, was, it wasn't all for nothing. I did get some good video out of it. But here's what I wanna know. Let me know in the comments. What should I do? What should I change? Besides, obviously, having the tune right. What I'm thinking is, I wanna get rid of the plate system. I wanna have individual foggers for each cylinder. Now, here's my question. Should I run dry foggers and control all the fuel through the injectors? Or should I run wet foggers and have a little bit of fuel also going through the fogger nozzles? Let me know in the comments. But either way, I'm going to do it again. I might do it with a different intake. Who knows? We may even soften the chamber on those 220 heads. Not that that's going to save it when it's 14 to 1. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Let me know in the comments what you want to see. What did I do wrong other than the obvious? Thanks for watching.